Carousel Travel, and this is our packing video for East Africa. Jumbo, I'm Neil, also Carousel Travel, and we're going to tell you a little bit about packing for East Africa, which could include Kenya, Tanzania, maybe guerrilla trekking in Uganda or Rwanda. And the biggest difference, if you've traveled in South Africa, you usually fly in larger planes and drive to the game reserves. In East Africa, you're most likely going to be on a smaller plane. This is kind of the workhorse of East Africa. This is a Cessna Caravan, it has 12 seats, and it uses small luggage compartments in the belly of the plane. And because of that, you can't have hard-sided bags, so the weight and the size of the bag is very important. So come along with us and we'll uh, show you how to get ready for your great safari. Let's go! Hi, we're back and our bags are packed, ready to go. I've got mine here and let's see how much it weighs. Just 18 pounds, Sarah. That's great job. Amazing. This bag is actually larger than what you'll need, but it actually works great because you've got these little cinchers on the side and you can just pull them tight to tighten everything up. And each bag will also come with a shoulder strap. You'll just want to make sure that you detach it each time before checking in your bag to make sure that it doesn't get damaged by the airline. And I have this beautiful olive bag here. I'm sure you're all jealous, but um, I'm going on to do some gorilla tre trekking in uh, Uganda, so I have more equipment and I'm sure more weight. So let's weigh this one, 26 and a half pounds. Um, generally, the airlines in East Africa limit you to 15 kilos, which is 33 pounds for a combination of your check bag and your carry-on, which we'll go into in a bit. So I always try to shoot for 25 or for sure under 30 for your check bag so that you have some allowance for your carry-on camera equipment and whatnot. Also, one thing that I like to do is put on a little distinguishing tape or ribbon or something because when you have a lot of bags that look the same that you can easily identify your bag. So now I think we're going to go to the big reveal, Sarah. Let's do see it. See what's in there. Awesome. Hi. Sarah here, back again, and I've got my luggage all unpacked. So I'm gonna go through what's inside and show you how I packed. So I like to pack in cubes, just because it keeps everything organized. Right here, I've got my shirts, pants, exercise clothes, some fleece jackets, and undergarments, of course, and toiletries in their own bag. Let's go through clothing as well. I've got a little bit of a tan gray neutral colored scheme going on for my clothes of course pants um, and these happen to be the ones that kind of zip off so that you can cool off during the day and t-shirt for layering a fleece jacket that's zippable and then a sweatshirt's always good too some shorts of course and then a scarf. I always love carrying a scarf because it keeps the dust off your face and keeps you warm too. As far as shoes go, for walking around the lodge you'll want a pair of flip-flops. If you want to work out you can bring a pair of tennis shoes as well. These are perfect for going on safari each day. Closed toe and they cover your feet perfectly, neutral colored. And if you want to dress up a bit for dinner, you can bring a pair of brightly colored flats. No heels, of course. It's just not necessary. This can dress up your outfit enough for dinner. And what I like to bring on a trip is something, a bag that can collapse so that I can pack it in my, in my check bag, but then I can use it at the end of the trip to pack, back my, pack my souvenirs to bring back home. Always helpful. Um, you may find a headlamp will be nice too in the evenings, or just a simple little flashlight. Got the adapter plugs too, but Neil will go into that a little bit more later. And that's what I have in my bag. Hi everybody, I'm back. So we're gonna start with our gorilla trek in Uganda. Um, key thing for going gorilla trekking is a great pair of hiking boots. You want a couple extra big plastic bags so if they get muddy and dirty, I usually stick my hiking socks right in there. Um, I would suggest you put a lot of miles on these babies before you get there. Um, 100, 200 miles of some good hiking. These are battle tested, so I know they work. As far as other shoes, um, I bring some sandals. If we're going to the pool, just some casual shoes for evening. Uh, tennis shoes that can be worn for casual or working out. Also, I have a pair of Keens that have been used throughout uh, 
the many continents from the rainforest in uh, the Amazon to Africa. Um, I'm not as organized as Sarah here, but I do have uh, a few cubes. This one I have um, workout clothes, and you'll find that a lot of the workout clothes can also work as layers for under your clothing when you're going out in the cool mornings. Um, I bring a couple of caps. This is a, um, a beautiful, beautiful hat here. What do you think? It's actually a, uh, it's actually waterproof would be good if you're in Rwanda. Most of the rest of the safaris in East Africa happen during dry season, so you don't need it. I bring a rain jacket again if you're in Uganda. Um, you're in the rainforest, it can rain any time of the year. And you're also, when you're hiking, you start out at 5,000 feet, but you may go up to 8,000 plus, so it's good to have a rain jacket along. This also works on safaris as well for in the cool mornings because it cuts the wind. Um, I have a, usually like to have all my um, toothpaste, bugs, uh, repellent, uh, antiseptics and whatnot in plastic bags so they don't leak. Um, again, like Sarah, I have scarves. I put in two, I wouldn't bring two, but just a cotton scarf that you could wrap around, um, cover up in case it's dusty because it is dusty this time of year. Flashlight, um, also have a headlamp. I probably wouldn't bring both. This is one of these little cool ties that are kind of water activated you can put around your neck. I, I love this, it says, will keep wearer cool for days. Helps reduce heart rate and blood pressure, reduces the effects of multiple sclerosis, migraines, menopausal hot flashes. So we got everything covered with that. So I, I thought I needed one of those. Um, you might also like, uh, these are called buffs. If you're a skier, you're maybe familiar with a buff, but these go around the neck. You can pull them up over your face. Just showing you some options. Um, if you read through your gorilla information, it talks about gloves to wear during the gorilla trek, and that's mainly so that if you're grabbing onto trees and pulling yourself up. I like these kind of lightweight biking gloves. These are non-padded biking gloves. That's the ones I use, but it could be a simple gardening glove as well. Um, these are the rest of my toiletries. We don't need to go into that. Some pants, again, Sarah used the convertible pants with the zip-off legs. I usually lose those, so I kind of keep mine attached. Um, she's more organized than I am. Another pair of evening slacks, some jeans. Um, here's socks, underwear, swimwear. I bring lots of plastic bags. Um, gallon size, quart size, sandwich bags, shorts, some t-shirts. Um, here's a heavy, heavier fleece. This is a, like a Patagonia quarter zip, which is great for the cool evenings at the Ngorongoro Crater and also Rwanda where you're up at 8,000 feet. Here's a reversible uh, sweatshirt, so you have a couple of color options. Um, shirts, a variety of shirts. Again, I'm in kind of blues, grays tone here, so it makes it easier to, if you stay with one color scheme. And then I use this if you have a few shirts you want to wear in the evening. You can use something like this to fold them up and keep them organized. So this was basically what I had for 26 pounds. Actually, I would probably cut this back a little bit because there's probably more than I actually need here. So let's go on safari. Hi, we're here to talk about our carry-on bags now. And as you've seen, backpacks are really the top choice for this type of trip. And this is the one I've chosen. I have, mine's a little bit larger because I have quite a bit of camera equipment that I like to bring. Um, so this is an REI one that, again, the colors show, don't show a lot of dirt. This is a little bit smaller REI backpack. So you probably all have something that will work. So now let's uh, take a look at what's inside. All right, let's talk about what's in my carry-on bag. So this is what I was, this is what I would carry for a carry-on, my backpack here. I like to throw in a purse that I can carry around during the day when I don't need as many things. So this works perfectly. Other carry-on essentials, your phone, of course, iPad or Kindle, external battery charger, Binoculars are always perfect for East Africa. Sunglasses. Passport. Of course, a copy of your passport. Yellow fever card is always important. Hand sanitizer wipes. Insect repellent wipes. Sunscreen. Medications. And of course, snacks. Okay, let's see what was in this backpack. It's now empty, nothing in there. We don't need that. Uh, we'll start out with documents. Passport, copy of the passport, 
and your immunization card. This is critical because when you're traveling between East Africa countries, you need a yellow fever vaccination. Most of them require it. If you're only going to one of them, they don't usually require it, but when you're going between countries, uh, you will need that. If you've lost yours, have your doctor um, recreate it or give you a new one, um, fill in the immunizations. Yellow fever is now a lifetime vaccination. It used to be good for 10 years, but that's recently changed. Um, all your prescriptions should be in your carry-on, never check those. Same with cash and all your valuables really need to be in your, in your carry-ons. For money, you're gonna wanna bring post 2006, which means the new type of bills. And really fives, tens, and twenties work best. You're not gonna need to exchange into local currency in most cases. You're gonna use this for tipping your rangers, paying your porters if you're um, guerrilla trekking in Rwanda or Uganda. So bring cash for that. Converters, there's really two type in East Africa, so you may want to have both, one with the little pins and one with more of the rounded knobs. I also have sunglasses, reading glasses, a book, um, charging kit for my uh, portable charger for uh, electronics, earphones, a couple of iPhone chargers, iPhone, um, credit cards, insurance card. I travel with my laptop, but you'll have to keep an eye on this depending on when you're traveling. If you're flying on Emirates or some of the Middle Eastern carriers, which work very well for getting to East Africa, you have to check your laptops and electronics. Um, so I'd be very careful with that. Security in East Africa at the airports isn't great, so I wouldn't travel with a new $5,000 Mac um, because it might disappear out of your bag. For camera equipment, um, I have my trusty Nikon, which I love, and this has a 24 to 120 lens on it, which is a great lens for general shooting, and surprisingly, even with a lot of the wildlife because it's so close. I also have a 70 to, one, or 70 to 300 telephoto that I use, and of course my charger, and again, I would use plastic bags for your camera equipment to keep the dust off. So I'm ready to go. I also have my water bottle, which I love to carry around, so let's go on safari.